introduce my panel. I am joined by former advisor to Jeremy Corbyn, James Schneider, who was at the protests yesterday. And we also have deputy editor of Spiked Online, Fraser Myers. James, you heard there the police officer saying that essentially it's not against the law. It's not a prescribed terrorist group, this particular Hizbut Tahrir. I think I've pronounced that correctly. Do you think this is just freedom of expression, no problems here, what we saw yesterday? Well, let me say what I saw yesterday, yeah, first go on. of all. So I saw um, probably hundreds of thousands of, of people. I mean, we just heard from Chris Hobbs. He thinks that's the largest since 2003, the anti-Iraq war yeah. protest. It was certainly huge. Um, and it was in the rain, mainly. And it was hundreds of thousands of people peacefully demanding that our government stops its complicity in the war crimes that are currently being perpetrated on Gaza. And I think that is the main takeaway. I think the vast, 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 vast majority of people who were there, that will have been their experience. That was certainly... May I ask what you experience. define as the war crimes that Israel are permit committing? Yes, of course. Um, so collective punishment is a, is a war crime under the Geneva Conventions. So the shutting off of electricity, water, fuel and food is by definition a war crime. Uh, collective punishment by... Hold on, I'll, I'll run through some of Yeah, OK. Right. The uh, raising Gaza to rubble uh, is itself a war crime of collective punishment. Already, more than one in 20 buildings in Gaza have been levelled since the beginning of this bombing campaign, which has seen more bombs dropped on Gaza than on Afghanistan in the entire first year of that war. These are clearly war crimes that are being committed, and they're being committed with British bombs, with British bullets, and with British complicity because our state is supporting them. Were you surprised not to see people protesting against Hamas because there are reports of Hamas, for example, stopping humanitarian aid from reaching its citizens? There are examples of Hamas potentially killing its own citizens, certainly not keeping them safe, um, essentially putting government... their lives at risk. If I thought that if this protest was all about peace, would you not see that demonstrated there? So our government doesn't arm Hamas. Mm. We don't provide diplomatic cover to Hamas. So we are in no way complicit with any crimes that Hamas engages in. But we are complicit in the crimes that the Israeli state carries out because we support the Israeli state we, fund, we help fund the uh, Israeli military and we offer it diplomatic cover. So, of course, if we are sitting here in London, which we are, and the protests yesterday are in London, and we're trying to do something to try to alleviate a atrocious situation that's happening where Gaza is being absolutely flattened, the thing to do, if you're in Britain, is to try to lobby our government to change course, to not just offer, mm. the, to carry water for the war crimes that, ha that were announced. And it's not like these war crimes let are me surprising. Bring in, let me bring in, in, in Fraser there, your reaction to yesterday's protests. Um, I think, uh, I just want to react actually to what the uh, police officer mm. was saying, because I think what will stick in the craw for a lot of people is that there is a kind of double standard. Now, I don't want people to be arrested for going on protests, even if they make inflammatory remarks. You know, you could you should be allowed to be an Islamist extremist. Um, that's how far I'd go in terms of free speech. But what will, what will upset people is the fact that clearly everyone knows the meaning of jihad. Everyone knows uh, it has a relationship with terrorism. You know, in the context of calling for Muslim armies, in the context of um, this, uh, you know, what Hamas did uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, and yet, if you were, you know, probably a middle-aged woman and you said um, women can't have penises and you put a sticker up um, mm. on your local park bench, you know, the police would be around within minutes. And we know that. We know, so I think what is frustrating for a lot of people is there is a clear double standard where sort of very extreme Islamist calls for violence are kind of um, look the other way and we say we need to under, you know, we need to have a bit of understanding. We, <laughs> there are multiple interpretations of the word jihad. Whereas if you say something completely normal, you'll be cracked down upon. I think that double standard... Do you think they're, they're scared of policing Islamists? Yes, I, th I think there's a bit of fear. There's also a, a tendency to not upset what they might call community relations or things like that. I think like those that. are very much upset. I think, <laughs> I th yeah, well, definitely. I think certainly, you know, yeah. a lot of uh, Jewish people are feeling very scared at the moment. Um, they don't feel that they're being uh, protected is what is what you hear. Um, 
So yeah, you know, the, you can't take sides in these things. You know, if you're if if we're going to have uh, crackdowns on inflammatory speech, then it can't. You know. It has to be for everyone. I mean, I prefer it if it was. I just no find one. it very curious that people aren't out there protesting against Hamas, um, and it makes me think perhaps that there are people who support the actions of Hamas, and, and that worries me very much. And the government are trying to do something about that. Whether anything actually happens is another thing. Now, I believe we have a video actually of yesterday on a tube, a packed tube full of Palestinian protesters. Um, I think we have it. Have it here. Yeah, so that's a video taken in a London tube yesterday. I'm not sure exactly what time, but sometime in the afternoon, it seems. And now there is a probe underway, because essentially what you heard was the tube tannoy being used to sort of rally a pro-Palestinian message, get the people going. Um, James, is that is that appropriate? Yes, it's absolutely fine. Why? So on your way to a football match, sometimes the tube drivers... It's not a football at, match, though, no, is but it? Hold, but hold on. Right. Let's just... What did he say? He said, free Palestine, which is a perfectly reasonable thing to say. And he said, keep people in your prayers. That's what I just heard there. Again. What does free Palestine actually mean to you, James? To me? Yeah. What does it mean it to me you? Because people throw around this yeah. chant all the time. And I wonder, what does it actually mean? Because a lot of people on that rally, unfortunately, seem to believe that it means the eradication of Israel. That's... Hold on. It, that just isn't true. Free Palestine. No one on that march thinks that's what it means. You said loads of people on that march. I can't account for what everybody did, but I can tell you from what I saw, and I was actually, I was there. Yeah. Now, Free Palestine means the liberation of the Palestinian people who are dispossessed, who don't have a state, who have who have suffered decades of occupation, who live under an apartheid situation. And Free Palestine means freedom, dignity and justice for those people who currently do not have it. It is a cry for justice, and it is in no way... A cry for justice, but you're not telling in, me what that actually means just, in terms I, of I, 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 I just policy. Did. Hold on. I, I, Self-determination and national liberation for the Palestinian people. Now, with equality and dignity for all. The precise form of a political settlement... I can't prejudge. That's going to be, and should it ever happen, it's going to come as a negotiation between the Palestinian mm. political actors and the Israeli political actors. But to say free Palestine is like saying, you know, um, end apartheid South Africa at that, that time. It's a court, like you can't mm. say, and therefore it must have this particular political solution. It is a basic cry for dignity and justice. OK, OK, Fraser, your reaction to what we heard on that tube carriage? Yeah, I, th I think, you know, obviously there are many different chants that are associated with these kinds of rallies. Um, free Palestine is, is, is kind of fine, but when you get into much dodgier territories, you know, this phrase, from the river to the sea, talking about uh, Palestine shall be free. Because that is, and everyone knows, that that is a call for the eradication of Israel. No, it Do you isn't. accept that? It, no, it, from no, the, no, from no, the river no, Jordan no, to it, the Mediterranean no, no, it is Sea. Not. No, it is not. There are that is the area hold, hold on, that hold, is being described, the, and everyone knows the that. Area where Palestinians live, where they are not free, runs from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean. Mm. So to say, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, is saying that Palestinians living in that territory will be free, will be able to live un with equality under the law, in peace and with dignity, which is something which everybody Do you think Israel can negotiate with want. Hamas? Israel s isn't negotiating with anybody. But do you think uh, it's possible hold, hold to negotiate on. with a terror organisation? Uh, yes, and that is how... Like Hamas? Uh, yes, and that is how um, uh, things stop... Organisations that are previously deemed terror organisations, for example, the IRA, come into negotiations. Hamas has, has also, in 2017, mm. did try to engage in some negotiations. Israel hasn't been taking part in peace negotiations since 2014. Really, you could turn the question around and you could say, is, is there anybody in the current Israeli government with whom you could negotiate? Hamas, given, Hamas given, for like example, the, the finance the minister, the for, given the a... finance minister has said that... Let Palestinian... me Fraser just come in there. I, I don't think that Hamas is like the IRA or even the previous uh, Palestinian libera li uh, liberation organisation. I mean, because Hamas 
Its explicit aim is the eradication of Israel and to kill Jews. So that's why it's much more difficult to have a serious... Not a great negotiation. starting point. It's not a good starting point for a negotiation. It's, it's, their aim is for an Islamist caliphate. It's not, for, it's not even for the liberation of Palestine. It doesn't care about Palestinians. It uses Palestinians as human shields. Its leaders are enriching it themselves in Qatar. So it, that is a very different kind of set of circumstances. Right, we'll come back to this. You're watching and listening to GB News Sunday.